What's up, Ninja Nerds? In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the rate and how to determine the rhythm of an EKG. So how do we do this? First thing we have to realize is here in front of us, we have a 12-lead EKG. So this is our nice, beautiful 12-lead EKG. What we need to do here is take a look. On this 12-lead EKG, you're going to see all these boxes. I want us to take a look at one large box. Zoom in on that bad boy. So this is one large box. This one large box is made up of multiple small little boxes. And to be a, a, you know, about accurate here, we have one, two, three, four, five little boxes. This one little box in time, it measures to approximately 0, 0.04 seconds, right? So one little box, one little box is approximately equal to 0.04 seconds. Now, if I take five of these little boxes and I multiply five times 0.04 seconds, that equals 0.2 seconds. And that is equivalent to one large box. So that's important. Now, there's multiple ways that we could calculate this. Here's what I want you to remember. One large box is equivalent to 300 beats per minute. So now, if I take one large box, every large box from that point, I can just divide. So let me give you an example. I have one large box, right? And again, one large box is going to be equal to 300 beats per minute. So beats per minute. I take two boxes. So now I have to say that I have 300 for every one box, but I'm going to divide that by two. That's equal to 150 beats per minute. Three boxes, 300 divided by three. That's 100 beats per minute. Four boxes, 300 divided by four boxes is 75 beats per minute. Five, 300 divided by five boxes is 60 beats per minute. And we could just keep going. 300 divided by six is 50 beats per minute. So the whole purpose here is how do we calculate the rate? All right, let's take this that we just talked about, large boxes. How do we do this? All right, so now what we gotta do is we gotta come over here to the 12 lead EKG, and again, look at these R waves, right? Here's an R wave. I wanna find an R wave that falls right on one of these lines, and look, this one's pretty darn close. That falls right on the line of that box. So, I wanna count from this R wave to this R wave, and I wanna find out how many boxes are in between, okay? One box, two box, three box, approximately four boxes between this R wave and this R wave. Well, what's four boxes? Well, let's come over here and look. Four boxes is going to be equal to 75 beats per minute. That's right there, that's how we calculate the rate. There's also other ways that we can calculate the rate. For example, we can have a rhythm strip. So over here, imagine here we have this rhythm strip. These little ticks here indicate one second, right? So we have one tick, so here we have one, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, six seconds. Whenever you have a six second rhythm strip, a six second rhythm strip, you take the number of R waves and you multiply that by 10. So we have one R wave, two R wave, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven times 10 is equal to approximately what? 70 beats per minute. Let's say, again, right here, about right here. That's where that R wave falls. One, two, three, four. Four boxes, it's, a, it's almost equal. Again, these are estimating. It's not gonna be a perfect exact rate. But again, using that four box method, what do we get? Four box method, we get 75 beats per minute. So you can see how these are pretty darn close. Now, here's one thing I want you to remember. You can have a six second rhythm strip and you can also have a 10 second rhythm strip. If you have a 10 second rhythm strip, you need to remember that you multiply whatever R waves, so number of R waves, times, in this case, six. And that is going to give you your actual rate. So just remember that, and we'll have a rate, we'll have a rhythm strip in another EKG later. But that's how we calculate rate. So in this case, we can say that the rate 
is around 75 beats per minute. Now, that is that. Rhythm. How do we do rhythm? So there's a bunch of different ways that we have to look to make sure that the to determine what the rhythm is. First thing we need to do is we need to determine the R to R interval. Again, we already kind of did that, right? So we took this example here where we went from this R wave to this R wave and we determined that it was four boxes. Well, the rhythm, it's dependent if that is four boxes between each contiguous R wave. So is it four boxes between this one here? Well, I'd say it's we definitely have one, two, three, and we have about you know a little bit more than half of this box and about a quarter of this box. So that's about four boxes. And again, you can just keep going. One, two, three, four. About four boxes. And again, if you just keep doing this all the way across, it should be four boxes contiguously from each R to R interval. This is best whenever you're doing it on a rhythm strip, but nonetheless. If the R to R interval is the same distance between each contiguous R wave, then it is going to be a regular rhythm. In this case, this sucker is regular. But boom. Next thing we gotta determine, P wave. Now here's what I like about the P wave stuff. What we're gonna do is, I'm gonna tell you, in order to determine if something is sinus, you have to use this method here. So we take a P wave, right? Here's our P wave, we're gonna have a P wave. We have to look at two leads. I want you to look at lead two, and I want you to look at AVR. Here's why. Let's take a picture of a nice little heart here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have a little picture here. It's SA node, and then over here you're gonna have your AV node, right? We know that the vector is directed which way? It's directed from the SA node to the AV node. All right, so if you guys remember, we had a little lead system here, right? We had lead two, right? And then over here, we're gonna have another one, which we talked a little bit about here in our basic video, AVR. AVR is about negative 30 degrees from this baseline here. So it's about negative 150 degrees, okay? But the positive electrode is gonna be on this end. The positive electrode of lead two is gonna be about 60 degrees. Here's what I want you to remember. The mean QRS, I mean the mean vector from the uh, SA node to the AV node, that's like, like that's like our P wave, right? If it, we had the heart here in the center, which way is that directed towards? It's kind of directed this way, in the direction of the lead to positive electrode. So if it's moving towards lead to positive electrode, that P wave should be upright. But if we have the other one, this is moving, again, towards this side, right? So this is the positive electrode of AVR. If we were to trace like kind of like a little uh, back trace, the negative electrode, this would be the negative electrode of AVR. Look at the positive charge of the P wave. It's moving away from which one? It's moving away from the positive electrode. If it's moving away from the positive electrode, what does that mean? Go back to the basics. It means it should be inverted. So the best way to determine if something is sinus is to look. Is the P wave upright in lead two and is it inverted in AVR? Well, let's go ahead and look. Here's gonna be our QRS complex here, right? So right before that, we should have a P wave. It's upright. P wave's upright. P wave is upright. All right, that's one part of it. Now what do we gotta do? Go to AVR. Here in AVR, here's our QRS complex. P wave is supposed to be right before it. Oh, look at that, it's flipped upside down. It's flipped, it's flipped. That means that this is sinus. So if you see this, this is indicative of sinus rhythm. If you don't, in other words, if you see that it's inverted in two and upwards in AVR, most likely the person who put on the chest, the put on the leads probably didn't put them on correctly and you just, they misplaced them. Rarely could it be dextrocardia and also rarely could it be an ectopic rhythm. But again, that's usually gonna be something that we look at. So now we know what? This is definitely sinus rhythm, okay? So we know that this is sinus rhythm. What do we do now? Next thing we need to do is determine if the P wave is actually going to lead to a QRS wave. So for every P wave, is there a QRS wave? Mainly this one, you look at the rhythm strip. You mainly wanna look at the rhythm strip for this one. But in this case, we can just use a very simple thing here and look at lead two. So in lead two, you got a P wave, you got a QRS complex, T wave. So again, P wave, QRS, and then T wave. 
Then after that, you have P wave, QRS, and you have a T wave. P, QRS, T. So if you see that, you're pretty much moving in a nice fashion. So there is association between the AV node and the SA node. In other words, what does that mean? That means when the SA node is firing down to the AV node, the AV node is receiving that signal and propagating that down into the ventricles. All right, so what does that mean? That means that there is AV association. Perfect. The reason why that's important is if a P wave didn't lead to a QRS wave, that might make you believe, oh wow, is there a heart block? Next thing we determine, QRS wave. We just wanna know, is it wide or is it narrow? How do you determine if something is wide or determine if something is narrow? Let's go back up to this little box over here. And in this little box, if you guys remember, we're gonna have a little box there, a little box there, and a little box there, right? One little box is 0.04 seconds. If I take three little boxes, so I take 0.04 seconds and multiply that by three little boxes, that gives me 0.12 seconds. Anything that is actually going to be greater than or equal to 0.12 seconds is considered to be a wide QRS. So again, if you what I want you to take from this is anything that is greater than or equal to 0.012 seconds, that is considered to be a wide QRS. Now this is the more significant one. Technically the QRS should approximately be 0.10 seconds. So we say anything that's actually kind of 0.10 second to 0.12 second is borderline kind of wide QRS. So that's something to remember. So how do we determine that? Go to this little EKG here. Let's take this one for example. That's kind of right on that line there. And we're gonna go to the end here about there and count the boxes in between from that point. How many is there? Well, if you look, there is one box and two box. So that's about two boxes. Well, we know two boxes is gonna be definitely less than 0.12 seconds. So that's a narrow QRS complex. Beautiful. So that is a narrow QRS complex. Why that's important? Again, we'll talk. If it's wide, that could be indicative of like VTAC or other conditions. And we'll get to that a little bit later. But this is what I want you to remember, something really quickly that I want to talk to you about uh, last second here. Rate. EKG machines are going to be naturally calculating the rate for you for the EKG. Here's something I want you to remember. Pretty much the EKG machine will calculate the rate much better than we will in a lot of circumstances. There's two scenarios where the EKG machine might not be as good as you are. And the reason why is it's, it's very simple to understand. If you guys remember here, what happens is the EKG machine, it takes into consideration the R waves, right? So if for some reason, let's say that someone has peaked T waves. They have peaked T waves. In other words, those suckers are big. So again, whenever someone actually, the EKG machine, it takes that R wave, it takes that R wave, and it determines the distance between it. What if someone has a T wave that is such a big peak T wave, and what kind of situation? Hyperkalemia like really high potassium levels, it might think that this is an R wave. And so it may track off of that peak T wave. So that's one reason why an EKG machine might not be great at calculating rate. The second reason is if it's kind of opposite. Maybe the QRS amplitude is really low. So it's almost at the level of the T wave. And now again, it's basing it, oh, this might be a QRS complex, but it's not, it's a T wave. So if you have low QRS voltage, and there's multiple different conditions that can cause this. Restrictive cardiomyopathy, uh, pericardial effusions, cardiac tamponade, a lot of different things. But this is the two reasons, usually most commonly, that the EKG machine will kind of make a mistake. Other than that, it's much better at calculating the rate for AFib or for atrial flutter you know, in a, in a two to one situation. So again, that's something to take into consideration. So let's base everything off of this EKG. What can we say about it? All right, 75 beats per minute. That's within 60 to 100, right? So that's good, normal rate. It's not bradycardic, it's not tachycardic. Ardor interval is regular, okay? It's sinus, that's pretty good. And there's AV association and it's narrow. Here's what I want you to remember. Whenever you see someone with regular, narrow QRS complexes, there's three things that you wanna think about, okay? And especially if it's fast. You wanna think about sinus tachycardia, you wanna think about atrial flutter, and you also wanna think about SVT. In this case, 
it's within the normal range. So it's normal heart rate, okay, and it's regular sinus rhythm. So this is actually going to be normal sinus rhythm. So this is a completely normal EKG. All right, let's move on to the next EKG. So what do we got to do first? First thing we need to determine is what is the rate? Again, you could look at the top of the EKG and determine it, but we're going to be very, you know, con you know, consistent with this. So let's find again somewhere where we can find an R wave that's kind of right on the line. All right, this one's pretty darn good. I like this one. It's close. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, okay, one box, two box, three box, four box. And that's kind of like, you know, about a half of a box. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's between four to five boxes. Okay. If you guys remember, we said that four boxes was equal to what? 300 divided by four. And that was going to be approximately 75. And then we said five boxes is going to be equal to 300 divided by five, which is about 60. So this is somewhere between 60 and 75. I'm just going to go ahead and say it's about, let's say it's about 70 beats per minute. So we're going to go with this being about 70 beats per minute. And again, remember I told you what's another way that we can calculate rate. We can take and assume that this is a 10 second rhythm strip. So this is a 10 seconder. Okay. If this is a 10 second rhythm strip, what do you do? You take the number of R waves and you multiply this bad boy by six. So how many R waves do we have? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 12 times six is gonna be equal to 72 beats per minute. Look how close we are. So you see how this is again, pretty good. And again, this is the way that I want you to remember. Usually this is the quick way. I like to use this one a lot, but it's also really good to use this method right here whenever you have an irregular rhythm because not all the R to R intervals are gonna be the same. In other words, it's not always gonna be four boxes, four boxes, four boxes. It might be four and five, it might be four and six. So that's important to remember. So we determine our rate. Let's go with and say 70 to 72 beats per minute. We're gonna just go with that for right now. Obviously you can pick whichever one you want. All right, two, next thing we gotta determine is rhythm. How do we determine that? R to R interval. So we said that it's about four, about four and a half boxes between each one. We'll go ahead and look and kind of just kind of eye this out. So one, two, three, four, that's about four and a half. Okay, one, about a half of it, two, three, four, and about another half. Yes, yeah, so that's pretty close. So I could go through every single one of these and all I'm trying to determine is, is from the R to R, is it pretty much regular? And I'd say, again, eyeballing this, if you want to go through each one, it's pretty regular. They're coming every about four and a half boxes. So I'm gonna say that right now my, for determining my rhythm, I know that so far the R to R interval is regular. What's the next thing I gotta do? Next thing I gotta determine is, is it sinus? Look at the P waves, what do we look at? We look at lead two. Lead two it should be upright. Ooh, -hoo -hoo, they are. So that's upright in two, it should be inverted in AVR. Here's my QRS, here's my P wave. It is, baby. So this right here, look at my P wave, base it off of that. This is definitely sinus. Next thing, I look at my rhythm strip. I want every QRS wave to come after a P wave. Here's a P, here's a QRS. And again, just keep following it. So P, QRS, T, P, QRS, T, P, QRS, T, P, QRS, T. And if you just keep following this, there is every it's according, right? So it's associated. So there is definitely, if we have a P wave for every QRS, there's definitely AV association here. There's no heart blocks, okay? D, look at that QRS wave. Look at that QRS wave. Again, I'm gonna just gonna find one here. Let's say that I take a look here um, at this one here, and I'm gonna go ahead at one, and I'm gonna look at this guy. I'm looking at that really nicely and I see that being about, you know, one, two boxes. So that's definitely a narrow. And again, you're going to be able to recognize when this is obviously a YQRS. I guarantee it. Wait till we get to an EKG, you'll see it. So this should look pretty familiar, guys. What do we have? A narrow QRS complex, regular sinus rhythm, AV association within the normal heart rate, 
Yep, this is another normal EKG. Okay, so normal sinus rhythm. Sweet deal, guys. So in this video, we talked about how to be able to determine the rate and rhythm for normal EKGs. I hope it made sense. In the next video, we're going to get into more detail on how to determine the rate and rhythm for EKGs that are showing sinus tachycardia and sinus bradycardia. If you guys liked this video and you guys thought it helped and it made sense, please hit that like button, comment down in the comment section, and please subscribe. Also, if you guys get a chance, go down in our description box. We have links to our Facebook, our Instagram, even our Patreon account. If you guys want to be able to donate even a dollar, we would truly appreciate it and it helps us to continue to make videos for you guys' enjoyment. As always, Ninja Nerds, we love you, and until next time.